Okay, last one, fun little trick called tap tempo. Um, so I'm gonna show you an example. Uh, this was a work that I made for a friend, Julia Gavor, is a DJ uh, and runs a uh, label called Jujuka. Uh, so she was having a uh, label night um, at a party in LA. And so um, I did the visuals uh, for she and the other DJs. Uh, and uh, what she had kind of hooked up before, she was working with some illustrators uh, out of London. And so the thing with her label, she releases comic books uh, with every uh, label release. Uh, so the illustrators had all, all these uh, basically like high-res image files that they gave me. Uh, so from that, I was able to make uh, a number of different kind of modes. Uh, and then kind of working with this uh, MIDI controller, kind of cycle through different, different states. Um, but all kind of uh, linked to the beat of whatever was happening at the time because of this uh, tap tempo system. Uh, so like going in, like it wasn't like a rehearsal situation, like I'm not really sure what they're gonna be playing. And so I need to make sure, like for that type of music, I wanted the visuals to kind of like match match the, the, the music, right? So uh, what we have here, actually let's just like see a little bit. Let's, let's go ahead and get it started. So fade. So you need to tap. Tap, tap, tap. Right now. Tap, 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 tap. So something like that. So what's what's happening here? Let's just go into the magic that is tap tempo. Uh, so the this beat chop is uh, one of the main brains of the entire situation. Uh, we can see right here the BPM for this track is 130.9. Uh, so when I hit so on my MIDI controller, I had like a button set up to, to hit this, but essentially it's it's uh, triggering this tap uh, right here. Uh, and there's a little, so it's kind of like just clever, um, you know, chops with a little bit of a chop execute, which we talked a little bit about. Uh, essentially what's happening is, let's see if I just like tap this right now. Tap, 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 tap. Uh, so a speed chop uh, is triggered. Uh, so what a speed chop does, it will, increase according to whatever time value that you give it. So with the number one coming in right here, it will increase by one per second. So it's kind of the, the normal sort of timing. Um, and every time, uh, I think here in the in the chop execute, it should be resetting, right? Yeah, da, 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 da. Right, so the speed, I'm like resetting it. And I'm, I'm grabbing this value. So basically with every tap, Whatever this value is, that becomes the length of time that has passed since my last tap. Uh, and here with this code, I'm taking whatever that value is, uh, and there's a little bit of, uh, you know, math here. I'm looking through these things called, uh, operator called tap. Okay, so these all right here are actually constants um, called tap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they are the kind of uh, database that's holding the durations of time in between the taps. So the, the idea being, you know, if, if the track is exactly 120 beats per minute, let's say, 
then my taps should be 0.5 seconds apart. But I'm not perfect. You know, maybe some might be 0.6, some might be 0.4, not quite. So we, we take eight different taps and that gets merged. And then the shuffle uh, does it sequences all samples. So it's going eight different channels and it takes that and becomes one channel with eight samples. So what was the first channel is now the first sample and so on and so forth. And so here's our friend analyze again. Uh, so right, it's, it's not analyzing the amplitude of an audio signal at all. Uh, in this case, we are just averaging that out. Uh, so it's averaging like all eight of these. So uh, the average being 0.104. Um, actually, let's listen to the sound again and I'm gonna do this again so we can kind of see. <laughs> So I tapped it more than eight times, but you can see, you know, it's about 0.45 seconds. Point, so they're slightly off. You know, pretty much always around 0.45 or 0.4667, uh, um, and they get merged, shuffled. So average becomes this value. Um, I'm actually realizing right now that I made this more complicated than it needed to be because I could have just made a math chop right here. Let's see if this gives me the same value. Let's go in here and combine chops. Average. Oh yeah, look at that. So, you know, sometimes I like to make life harder uh, than it needs to be for myself. Um, but yeah, different, like, the great thing about Touch Designer, there's so many different ways you can do the same thing. Okay, and what is this little error though? MIDI. Okay, we don't need to worry about the MIDI right there. Uh, okay, so I have the amount of time in between beats essentially uh, to get the BPM we just kind of do the math right so okay if there's x beats wait x numbers of seconds per beat but I want beats per minute so there's just kind of you have to flip that around a little bit uh, so we divided 60 by that value and I get the uh, BPM right here um, and when I that value changes. We go to this thing called local time. Uh, this this is something we don't really need to think about, but uh, local is this thing that is in every, I zoom back to the, uh, usually on the, the root level, we see this local. I don't know if you've like looked into that before. Uh, this is, this contains uh, a kind of master thing called the time comp. Um, what I'm doing here basically is I'm overriding that universal time comp and creating my own. Uh, so this is setting the, uh, can I see it in here? No, I think I have to zoom into that. There we go, okay. So there's something in, in the time comp that says tempo, uh, so 130.9. Uh, so that needs to happen in order for the beat chop to work properly because the beat chop looks at a kind of whatever the local time uh, component is to, to get its, um, to get all the timing information uh, for this. So once I've set the tempo, all this other information comes from that. I've got like different beats. I mean, like if it's, uh, you know, certain tracks might be in three, four time, let's say like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, so I can kind of shift, shift that right here. So it could be at different periods. Um, I've got, so beats here are like zero, one, two, three, I've got the number of bars. Uh, so this is also kind of per bar, but I've got like a sine wave version of it, ramps. So lots of different um, information I can use. So what I'm doing, then, oh, actually, you know what? Uh, also, I have this delay here. So if I hit my delay button, that holds it for a second. And then I click it again to let it go. So I do that in order to kind of uh, re-sync things. So for instance, Let's open this other one. So 
So I'm, I'm happy with the way this is syncing, but um, let's say I want these elements to move not on the kick, but on the, the, the kind of the offbeat, right? So what I can do is uh, hold this delay for a little bit and then press it again in order to kind of realign the uh, sync. Good. Uh, we can look at some more of these uh, together in class and some of the details of these, but that's uh, that's essentially it. Um, although I should say how to access that beat chop. Right, that's a good point. Uh, let's go, okay, so I had the beat chop. Uh, here is the mastermind of everything. Uh, if we go into this one that I'm doing right here, so we can see uh, another use of select chop. Um, so I've got a select chop in all my little micro nodes, um, and it is looking at uh, the root level, looking in my tap tempo container, and then looking at beat one. So it's grabbing that information. Um, so this is the way you kind of propagate. If you have like a master control in one place, you can propagate that all over your, your network by using the select um, chop like this. Uh, and then like for this, you know, just little little tricks. I wanted like a little trigger, let's say, um, with, with every like with every beat. Um, it doesn't really give you like one little trigger because this changes with every beat. You know, this is kind of going from zero to one every single beat, but there's not like a single pulse on every beat, right? Uh, so to do that, it's just required a little. Um, you know, a little massaging the data. So what I have, I have like the select here, just grabbing the ramp beat. And then what, what am I doing here? Multiplying that 1.1. 1 .1. And let's just see the trails here. How am I doing this? Okay. And then what's this doing? All right, so then this becomes my little pulse uh, because then Oh, there we go. Uh, so I'm doing integer floor right here. So this, this integer um, parameter of the math is really powerful also. So if ever you need to round numbers, uh, you've got different things here. So ceiling, meaning it'll round like a float number, it'll automatically round to the integer above it. Floor automatically rounds to the integer below it. And round will uh, go to the nearest integer. So by doing floor, so I like multiply this by 1.1. So you can see this is barely getting up above one, right? Uh, so as long as this is below one, this integer floor is shoving this down to zero. When this gets above one, then it just becomes one. So that's how I'm just doing like a, a quick little, um, quick little pulse here. You can see that little gate, how long that lasts. So I, I find that more useful um, to use as a trigger. And then I think, uh, right, I'm doing this sort of count and using that, uh, and this is a little more complicated to kind of just trigger new configurations of these. This kind of like randomized uh, divisions uh, with every beat. Okay. <laughs>